And, uh, you know, I want to recap what happened there because uh, I've been through a lot in my life, people. I really have been. And uh, I never thought I'd be caught up in uh, cancel culture. Poor Michael Franzese is a victim of cancel culture. What a whiny baby this man is. Former Mafia captain Michael Franzese is the latest in a list of desperate influencers who have thrown their hat into the ring to become PR cheerleaders for self-confessed human traffickers Andrew and Tristan Tate. Michael travelled to Romania and conducted PR interviews with both Andrew and Tristan, where he sat there smiling and nodding like a good little stooge and didn't correct any of the Tate's lies like a good boy. I'll put the links to my reaction to Andrew and Tristan's interviews in the description and pinned comment. During Michael's Tate PR tour, he became incredibly unhinged. He attacked the 12 women that accused Andrew and Tristan Tate of human trafficking, rape and various other assaults by essentially calling them liars, saying the allegations are fabricated. Michael constantly hides behind the notion of innocent until proven guilty for his defense of the Tates, yet isn't prepared to wait for the results of the trials before accusing these women of fabricating serious, serious crimes that were allegedly committed against them. After Michael was finished with his cheerleading session, he had a public speaking tour planned throughout the UK. Naturally, the venues that Michael was scheduled to speak at were alarmed when they were notified that Michael had been hurling such vitriol towards women that are victims in ongoing rape and human trafficking cases. So one after the other, venues started dropping our boy Michael. And this brings the video that I am reacting to today. Michael, a 73 year old man, whining about his haters attacking him with cancel culture. It's pretty clear why Michael Franzese and Andrew Tate get along so well. They are both embarrassing, pathological liars. Michael couldn't even bring himself to be honest about why people think that Andrew Tate is a human trafficker. So for me, you're innocent until proven guilty. The Tates have a huge following and I think those that follow them uh, totally understand that. But then there's the other side, you know, who are claiming that they are misogynists and they go off their social media uh, comments and so on and so forth. And people, let me, remind, let me remind you of something. Things that might be distasteful, language that might be distasteful, doesn't always and in most cases doesn't ever rise to criminality. You might say things that could be offensive, but that doesn't mean it's a crime. And what we no shit, you doofus. Michael is trying to suggest that people think Andrew and Tristan Tate committed crimes because they said some naughty things on the internet. There's a lot of evidence publicly available that would leave any rational person with the opinion that the Tate brothers have committed some horrific crimes, such as text messages that have been pulled directly from theirs and their accomplices' phones that blatantly show evidence of crimes. There's also the fact that Andrew used to sell a course teaching the very methods of human trafficking for which he has been accused. A human trafficking expert that appeared on ABC's recent documentary about Tate was also of this opinion. So what are you showing us here? Here is the PhD program of Tate's. Sylvia Tabushka is an expert in human trafficking. She's been researching the Loverboy method worldwide for years. Is Andrew Tate, in your opinion, teaching sex trafficking methods to an audience through these programs? Actually, for me, all the lover boys trafficking methods uh, are present in his PhD program. So Michael's comments about posts on social media not equaling criminality are irrelevant and moronic. Now, understand this, many people have gone there and interviewed the Tates. So keep that in mind as I move this forward. Right after that, uh, I was on Pierce Morgan's show. And I want you to watch it, because Pierce agreed with me on a lot of things that I talked about concerning the Tates. He said, Michael, they're innocent until proven guilty. He said the same thing. I don't agree with all of the things that were said by Andrew and, and possibly Tristan. I don't agree with everything. Some of the things could be misconstrued or construed to be misogynistic. I don't agree with that, he said, but uh, I believe they're innocent until proven guilty. So a guy, is, a guy of substance, like Pierce Morgan, tremendous interviewer, a lot of integrity, agrees with me, and I think a lot of people take that position. 
It is true that Piers Morgan and others have also made the trip to Romania to interview the Tates, but to suggest that Piers has expressed the same stance on the case as Michael, or conducted his interviews in an even remotely similar way, is blatantly dishonest and misleading. Yes, Piers has said that he believes in innocent until proven guilty, and that this should apply to the Tates, and while Michael has also been repeatedly saying innocent until proven guilty, he has also said that the allegations from these women are fabricated. He said that this case is a sham and the Tates are innocent, calling a dozen potential rape and trafficking victims liars. Say what you want about Piers Morgan, but he's not stupid enough to say something this insane. While Michael makes the point that others have went to Romania to interview the Tates, Let's compare the response of Piers Morgan when Andrew tries to say that he has been accused of helping his friends make TikTok videos and taking their money, and then see what kind of pushback Michael gives when the Tay brothers spew this absolute garbage. I waited two entire weeks inside of my cell before I was given an English translation and then I realized exactly how ridiculous the whole case was. Just to clarify, I am accused of helping my friends get big on TikTok. That is what I'm accused of. I told some girls I know how to post on TikTok to become viral when I was at the time the most viral person on the planet. And they are saying I'm a human trafficker for that reason. It is insane. Well, we'll come to what you've been accused of. It's more serious than the way you've categorized it, but we'll come to that. It's more serious than the way you've categorized it, but we'll come to that. I'm sitting in a courtroom where a girl is saying he's never done anything to me. I asked him how to get famous on TikTok because he was famous on TikTok. They put this whole case together based on garbage and stupid YouTube videos he made, and they're trying to take him down. He's never hurt me. I have no problem with him. I don't want this case. <laughs> but essentially, they found conversations of me with women who say, this is a setup, the boys aren't victims. I'm not a victim, the boys aren't criminals. I just asked mm -hmm. them for help on social media. They found my conversation saying, post this on TikTok at this time. The best time for engagement on Instagram is this. If you're going live on TikTok and monetizing your account, you need to do it this way. And these women never gave me a single penny. But my prosecutor has made up this definition of, definition of human trafficking, saying I'm orchestrating and controlling these women from afar to get them to make money on social media, even though he's never proven they've given me a penny. So they've made up a new definition of what human trafficking is just for me so they can charge me with human trafficking, which is a very serious case. No. It's very clear that Michael comparing how Piers Morgan conducted his Tate interviews to his sickening PR cheerleading session is beyond desperate. Michael, you attacked women and victims and Piers clearly didn't. Well, you would not believe the firestorm that it caused in the United K. There was one particular person in Parliament that came out very strongly against me. She said uh, that I was a misogynist because I interviewed the Tates and because I supported them. There was... Poor Michael playing the victim. Maybe just before your tour, you shouldn't have started carrying on like a degenerate platforming men that are awaiting trial for sex trafficking and rape while calling the victims in the case liars. There was another person in the minority, I would say, who on YouTube started to call all the venues and threaten the venues that we were having our, our talks in, our events in, and threaten them, you know, that there would be problems if the events went on. They also went on to say, which was an absolute 1,000% outright lie, that in my presentation, which I've been doing for 25 years, I was going to have a video of Andrew, and Andrew was going to appear live on stage with me, not live, you know, live through the video, and uh, that was going to be the content of my speaking talk. It was an absolute lie. There was no truth to it whatsoever. But I don't know if the person that called the venues really said those things, but it really shouldn't make a difference. The venues were justified in cancelling your event, so stop having a cry and take some responsibility like a big boy. Well, this person in Parliament, I'm not going to mention her name, you can go on YouTube, because she made statements about me in Parliament saying that I was a misogynist. Now, let me stop this right there. I have a wife that I'm married to for 39 years, okay, who is very independent. I have five extremely independent daughters. I have granddaughters. I am anything but a misogynist. I've never been accused of that at any time, anywhere in my life. As a Brilliant. According to Michael, you cannot be a misogynist if you have a wife, daughters, and granddaughters. 
going by Michael's logic, Ted Bundy wasn't a misogynist because he had a wife and a daughter, even though he raped and murdered over 30 women. Case, and I'm going to tell you something, people. Please, I don't speak out of my, you know, you know the word, term. I know the law, especially in New York. I was indicted six times in the state of New York, once in the state of Florida. I went to trial five times in the state of New York, both state and federal. I know the law. I know how they operate. I know what they're capable of doing. This Guys, you will not find a better legal expert than Michael Franzese. He's an absolute degenerate criminal who's been in and out of court more times than you can count. What an embarrassing clown this guy is. So when I see this so clearly, why would I not give the benefit of the doubt to Andrew Tate and to Tristan Tate when they've been speaking up for men, speaking up for men being men, and going against the current ideology? In the Did he say speaking up for men or scamming men? You gotta put a famoose on it. So I'm trying to teach these women and the women kept fucking it up. So I said to, said to him, it's like, you know what, fuck it. I'm taking over. So what I did is I unplugged their keyboards and plugged a new one in from me behind the screen. So the chicks would sit there and hit a, a keyboard that wasn't plugged in. And me and my brother and eventually some staff I trained would do all the talking. The girls were just pure, just famoosers, just laughing and doing this, their titties out. And they were talking to fucking ice cold hustlers. We were taking their money, all of it. And they, they come and say, <laughs> what kind of, bro, all of it. We were fucking milking them dry. Women haven't got a clue how to famoose a dude. They don't have, because they rely on their looks. They don't have any of the intellect. They have no game, nothing. <laughs> they're some, though, they're, they're nothing. They're some. Nah, you get, you get a man, you get a man with game and give him a female's body, a female avatar, we he will fuck a guy up. I had these guys selling their houses, life savings, loans, all of it to me. Give me it all. So like, and it's, it's basic shit, right? You'd have Did a you guy- feel bad or no? Fuck no, to give a solitary fuck. <laughs> you, now I wanna go a step further. There was a person that reached out to me during the tour in an email and said that they were one time as part of law enforcement, I'm not gonna mention their name or even the country, and they had the opportunity to look at all of the evidence, alleged evidence, okay, against the Tates and told me it was an absolute sham. There is no evidence. He told me this firsthand and I turned this person over to the Tates because they need to know this. They know it already. But if people on the inside are saying the same thing, they need to know this. And I wow. Someone from law enforcement told Michael that there's no evidence, even though there is a mountain of the 75,000 pages of evidence publicly available online that anyone with a functioning brain and access to Google can find. The text messages alone pulled from Andrew, Tristan, Luana, Georgiana and the victim's devices show very clearly that they are done for. It's very likely, going on the behaviour we've seen from him the last few weeks, that Michael is completely lying about speaking to a member of law enforcement about this. But if he is telling the truth, it was probably a very well-adjusted former member of the Department of Homeland Security, like Myron. And then you dumbasses, three years later, believe some bitch that makes the same fucking allegations again! You fucking idiots! I'm not going anywhere! Okay, and that goes for him and Tristan. I want to read something that Andrew wrote, wrote this morning on X. And uh, tell me what your thoughts are on this. Okay. Strap yourselves in, this is gonna be good. Michael, a grown man, is about to very seriously read a recent statement of Andrew Tate from Twitter. And the source that Michael quotes for this statement, Tate News. An Andrew Tate's propaganda account on Twitter run by a literal child. Now, quote, I invested money in Romania and they threw me in a jail cell. Two years later, I'm still not free. I still can't leave the country. Two years and all my money is blocked. All my cars are taken. All my assets are seized. Why is this happening? He hasn't been convicted of anything. Why are they seizing his assets? Same it's called the law, so stop your whining. Andrew, in his words, moved to Romania partly because of the less strict sexual assault laws, so he can deal with the laws in Romania and many other countries about seizing assets pre-trial when there is evidence of organized crime. No one saw any victims on the news, not even one time. 
and I challenge any of you to bring something different. I've been watching this case. I haven't seen any victim cry out and say, hey, I'm a victim. I'm part of this. Not one time on the news. The I'm sorry, but this man is brain dead. Obviously, victims of human trafficking and rape in ongoing legal proceedings must remain anonymous. Michael's suggestion that there is no victims in the case of the Tay brothers puts him on par with the 12-year-old Andrew Tate fans. Firstly, the idiots at Diacot have accidentally leaked the victims' names multiple times. It happened again just last week. Obviously, for such a case, the court documents provided to the Tates and their legal teams have the victims' names listed. I can forgive the children that follow Andrew Tate for believing his blatant lies that he has not seen any victims. But a 73-year-old man, come on. Here is part of the court documents with the victims' names listed, which of course have been redacted. If I have seen this, so have Andrew and Tristan Tate. The only girls I can find are girls who say they are not victims. I've seen that. The government, law enforcement, the prosecution is trying to convince these girls that they're victims when they're saying they're not victims. They did this willingly. And let me Michael really thought he was doing something by reading out this dumb statement from Andrew. Two of the seven victims in the Romanian case, Yasmina and Beatrice, released videos saying that they are not victims and the Tay brothers are great guys. Andrew Tate, aka the smartest man on the planet, was caught recorded on a jail phone call, instructing his cousin Luke to direct Yasmina and Beatrice to produce those videos and even told them what to say. But Michael Franzese really is a gullible 12 year old Hustlers University student sitting here and crying, what victims? And let me tell you something, you know, these sites out there like OnlyFans and everything, Andrew and Tristan didn't create those sites. They didn't create them. The women that are on there are on there will willingly. Now, if somebody is helping them, you know, market themselves better, well, why aren't they locking up the people from OnlyFans? Why aren't they going after the guy that created it? And I don't know who that is. I have no axe to grind with him. I'm just saying, there's nothing illegal about it, obviously. I want Brilliant. Andrea and Tristan didn't invent OnlyFans. Why aren't they locking up the people from OnlyFans? There's nothing illegal about it. The Tates should hire this guy as a lawyer. I mean, hey, he can't be any worse than Joe McBride. I often wonder if anyone considers the fact that two years have passed and no one has seen any victims. They were saying that they were going to put them out there. We haven't seen it yet. I sat in a cell watching the news as they said I was a bad person, that I made so much money that I was a criminal, that I was a human trafficker. Do you know, you know what, a, what a terrible uh, accusation that is to be called a human trafficker in the real sense of the word human trafficking? Do you know what a horrible allegation that is? You better have evidence to back something like that, that up. Not something that you're trying to paint as human trafficking or whatever. That's a horrible allegation. And you know what? The boys are very, very offended by that. By rights, they should be. If that tag was put on me, I'd be extremely offended by it. That's a terrible accusation. And we're going to find out that, that that wasn't true. I believe that. Michael, you might think that being called a human trafficker is highly offensive. Well, you know what's really, really offensive? Being human trafficked. I was a criminal. I was a human trafficker. We were going to see all the details of the case come out two years later, and there were still no victims. Now, the argument can be made, well, you know, Andrew, they're not going to put it out there yet. But, you know, you do get discovery. You know, in a criminal case, you get discovery. You're allowed to see who the victims are, alleged victims, who the people that are making statements against you are. Hasn't seen it yet. What happened in the United Kingdom? Well, they couldn't shut me down. They made it very, very difficult, changing venues all the time. They didn't care about the people that bought tickets that were waiting, you know, every moment to find out where the new venue was. They didn't care how they inconvenienced people. They had an agenda and they just wanted to get the word out and they didn't care how they lied about me, my family, the they didn't care. So I've seen it firsthand. I've become part of it now. 
And that's why I'm a stronger supporter at this point in time for Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate, and always, of course, for Donald Trump, because he's a victim here. That's it, period.